Well, yeah, that was only one of the stories that he told me backstage about books and reading and children. Uh, <clears throat> what a remarkable human being, President Clinton. Uh, <clears throat> We all remember him as somebody who could talk to anybody and connect with them as if they were the only person in the world. And that's the way I feel right now. I feel like I should sit down and let him speak on my behalf, and that would be <laughs> the end of it. Uh, but I, I do want to thank him for coming here tonight and for his, uh, his, his part of a family with three best-selling authors, which he referred to including right now a children's book. Um, <clears throat> and tonight we really honor him as, a, and he said it all, as a champion of books and reading for all, and for his consistent le leadership on issues of literacy, education, freedom of expression, and particularly, of course, his passion and compassion for young people, which is so evident in the way he just talked to us. Thank you, President Clinton. Uh, <clears throat> I won't sit down, but I feel like I should right now. Uh, his, he, he also captured my wonder about the word literarian, which I am not, I'm hesitant to share with the cab drivers, uh, <laughs> but I, 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 I'm, glad that, uh, I'm glad that he feels that we, somehow our company defines that word. And the, uh, his story about finding books everywhere is, you know, close to my heart. I, I wish he had not referred to my work as completely charitable because my shareholders are always <laughs> criticizing me for that. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, uh, th thank you, President Clinton. I want to thank Executive Director Lisa Lucas and Chairman David Steinberger. You know, an awesome. Uh, you, you should probably notice this room is you know, twice as full as it used to be. And that's Lisa and David, what they've done. And uh, as well as the directors of the National Book Foundation for acknowledging me and Scholastic this year. Uh, your leadership is making this organization an even more vital part of the reading culture that we honor tonight. I want to thank the 10,000 people of Scholastic around the world, each of whom will tell you that their job is to help children to read, uh, as well as the, my close associates here tonight uh, who have driven this company forward uh, for many years, including help on this uh, short speech uh, from uh, two of my very closest friends. Here with me tonight are also members of the Robinson family who share the scholastic story since my father started the company in 1920 as a high school magazine devoted to the best in contemporary literature and current social issues, still our DNA nearly 100 years later. Uh, and finally, as two important parts of my message tonight, I am so proud to introduce and honor, and I can't name them all, uh, the 12 authors here who have joined me who create the books that children love, as well as uh, the Chancellor of City Schools of New York City, uh, who uh, teaches more than a million children to learn to read and understand. So the creative books and the schools and the distribution, all part of, what I, of, of our story. I, I always wanted to be a writer, uh, and to be at these book awards, I saw some great looking and great writers uh, out there getting pictures taken. Uh, I, want, I always wanted to receive a, a, a prize for a novel, and I wrote several of them, unpublished. Uh, but now, for reasons I'll explain, I am so grateful to you for giving me a reading award instead. In my early 20s, I became an English teacher in a good high school and discovered that while about a third of my students could read well enough, most of them uh, really didn't, didn't want to read or did not read confidently, often because the books they were assigned were not connected to their lives. So this became a personal challenge to me. How, how could I get more kids to read? After two years as a teacher, I joined Scholastic and quickly learned that the strength of the company 
was reaching directly into classrooms through our book clubs and magazines, getting an immediate response from students and teachers. This was an ideal platform to make reading more exciting and more accessible uh, for kids and connecting directly to their lives. Research shows that, it, that if children choose and own their books, they are much more likely to read and finish them. Uh, and, and by publishing that right content deeply rooted in student interest, Scholastic was privileged to be the link between the, the child, the school, and the book, enabling, enabled by teachers whose job it is to inspire children to learn to read and love to read. Scholastic's mission then as now is to engage all children in reading and ensure that our books and magazines are easily acceptable, accessible in subject matter, in reading level, in price, and above all, in student interest. Through the years, we worked hard to find books and topics that would reach children from different backgrounds. And, and uh, I have personally been working on what is now called diverse books for more than 50, 50 years. Today, uh, we're keenly aware that the children in U.S. schools are more economically diverse than ever before. 50% of the children are of color. So more, more effort needs to be made to find a wide range of diverse experiences in order to reach our goal of reading for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's, an, that's an old story that's always new. And, uh, we're, we're an enthusiastic promoter of books and reading, not just as the gateway to academic success, but as a great way, way to learn more about yourself and who you want to be. We're happy to publish and sell award-winning books and equally happy to find books that make you laugh because we know that reading for fun is likely to turn you into a lifelong reader. In choosing Scholastic to be honored tonight, you are also recognizing the power of children's books, not just as a category of publishing, but as a creative enterprise which operates at the highest artistic level to enter the world of the child's imagination. The brilliant artists, storytellers who are here tonight work in picture books and graphic novels and even will alternate illustrations and text uh, to build a story. There is no formula for what will work to match the interest of a child with a great story or a good, great character is still the realm of the story, storyteller or artist. Books as various as Goosebumps, Captain Underpants, Magic School Bus, and even Harry Potter and the Hunger Games, all titles which are labeled children's books, have topped the all-time bestseller list for all books, children's and adult, and will certainly live for generations. These books have converted non-readers into readers and have made reading available to all. And these titles have contributed to the education and learning of children by enlarging their world, helping them think at higher levels, showing them the magic of stories to define what it is to be human, <clears throat> and of nonfiction and information to help, the, help them understand the world we live in. To carry out our goal of reading for all, Scholastic reaches through the schools to make books available to large numbers of children who do not have access to bookstores or libraries, but who are reading because of their teachers in schools. In the last 50 years, we have sold globally more than 13 billion copies of more than 100,000 titles, mainly published by houses who are in this room tonight, including, of course, Scholastic. During this period, our, U our US classroom magazines have also circulated about 15 billion copies. America would be a different place without the influence of all this reading in the lives of children. Most of this reading has taken place because of the pre-K to 12 schools, where millions of teachers work enthusiastically each day to help children learn to read. All, skill, all schools, of course, should be equally equipped to educate children at a high level. But as you know, schools are frequently constrained by human and financial resources, and so provide unequal education depending on social class, zip code, and access. Yet equal education is not only the law of the land, but the only solution to maintaining a democratic society. We must all work to help our schools have the resources they need to lift all children. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, it's, 
in, in the information world of the 21st century, and as a, ch as a children's publisher uh, and educator, we look to the future. We look, we see the world as it's going to be 20 years, 30 years from now, when the children that are in school now are, are adults and citizens. But in that world of the mid 20th century, it's extremely likely that reading and learning, whether in print or digital form, will be more important than ever for all people. We don't want the world to become 20% reading haves and 80% have-nots, where access is the power of literature and information uh, becomes a matter of status. For unless all young people can understand how to read and think, uh, to understand the dimensions of the human spirit through stories, and to understand how the world works through information and nonfiction, it is very likely that our society will shift, perhaps imperceptibly at first, to a world like Panem, uh, where the elites, powered by technology, will control information. We have a huge stake in establishing a level playing field where everyone reads and understands, whether from a book or a Facebook or a Twitter feed, ensuring that all people can have a, a voice in determining what their society should be. This is why I believe reading for all is an important idea for you to take away tonight. In the technology-driven information age, the future depends on all people having access to reading and literature and information. As part of the larger goal of education for children in the U.S. and around the world, readers will strive, strive to be better, to be more connected to others, to build a world of hope and, and caring, and to make their lives better and their society stronger. So as writer, writers, as artists, as teachers, as librarians, as booksellers and publishers, please join me in recognizing the importance of tonight's message and battle cry, reading for all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.